Chatter Accountant. You're welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you are new here, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. To my returning subscribers, thank you so much for always stopping by. Please don't keep this blessing to yourself. Share this videos with as many as you know that is going to benefit from it to your family to your friends your classmates share to everybody so that they can benefit as well and thank you so much for the reviews keep it rolling in so today what are we talking about so today we're going to be talking about the pristine the pristine you know this is a very very important aspect of the case study examination that you have to know because it's like the first section of the examination question that you would actually come in contact with Yes, it's important that you know what the cover page is, what the internal and external report is, what the executive summary should look like, the financial statement analysis, all of that. We've done that in our previous classes. If you haven't watched the videos, you can just go through them and learn. And please, when you're watching my videos, we're having a class, right? This is not like a movie that you sit down and watch a movie and you don't need to hold a paper and pen, right? But when you're watching my videos, please try as, try as um, as much as possible to hold the paper and a piece of like a piece of paper and pen jot down things learn you are learning right so please just make sure you do that so today we're going to be talking about pristine yes pristine is very very important and very very soon you soon you will soon see your pristine so you have to know what to do i don't want you to be confused when you see your pristine i want you to be ready right so that's what this video is about to so prepare you before you receive the pristine so what are, we going, what are we going to be talking about today? So today we're talking, I'll be telling you what the pristine is, the content of the pristine, how you can access it, the importance of the pristine, and what the steps you need to take when you get to the pristine. So I'm going to tell you all about that today. So the first thing is, what is the pristine? So the pristine is a section of the ICANN examination that is released two weeks before the examination date. So two weeks before your examination date, you will have seen a section of the of the case study examination that you are going to be doing. So now, basically, the case study examination has two sections. We have the unseen and we have the pristine. So the pristine is just like the word pre, right? Before. And unseen is the one you see in the examination. So, so two weeks before the examination, so let's let's have an example. So let's say your examination question is 40 pages now. Just that's just an example, right? 40 pages now. So probably about 20 pages will be you'll be released to you two weeks before the examination date, and the remaining 20 pages will be given to you in the examination. So in the exam on the examination day, while you are in the examination hall, you'll be giving you'll be given 40 a 40 page, like the number of questions, the question paper will be 40 pages, right? But before you enter the examination hall, two weeks before you enter the examination hall, you will have received 20 before. So it's just like, oh, additional 20, right? So that's what the precinct is just basically about. A section of the ICANN case study exam that is given two weeks before the examination date. And like I said, the exam ICANN examination has two major sections, which is the precinct and the unseen, right? So the precinct would be released just basically two weeks before, um, two weeks before the examination date, right? Now, however, the unseen will not be released until the examination, until you get into the examination hall. So you won't see the unseen until you get into the examination hall. But the pristine, you will have seen it. So that's just basically what the pristine is about. So now, what are the contents of the pristine? So now when you receive your pristine, there's some things that you actually see there. So one thing that you see is that you get inform they'll tell you information about you, information about who you are, what you are doing, where you are working. So as you step into the examination hall, my name is Miriam, my name is Anu, my name is Mercy, my name is David, my name is Samuel. Don't drop it in front of the examination hall because you're going to be given a totally new personality identity. You're given a new employer, new set of responsibilities. So it's like a totally different person that you become when you enter the examination hall, right? So that's just basically what. So we give information about you. Oh, you are, you are Mercy. Messi Williams, just that we probably are with Messi Williams. You worked for you work for Skyride and Co. Chartered Accountant. Your responsibilities include bookkeeping, accounting, and some stuff like that, right? So you'll be given, so you'll be told who you are, who your employer is, your responsibilities, and the company you're working for. So you'll be given information about that in the pristine. 
after that, you'll be given information about the recipient of your report. The recipient of your report. So, who are you paying the report for? Who are you paying the report for? So, you'll be told information about the recipient of your report. So, information about, and not in this case now, the the person you are paying the report for can be an internal party or an external party. We have talked about that, an internal report and external report. So, if you don't know much about that, that's not the problem at all. Just search my channel, look for internal and external report, the video on internal and external report, and watch it. It's going to help you a lot. Please do that before you turn off your data today, right? So, the recipient can be an internal party or external party. So, internal party is basically when you are reporting for the em your employer. You know, previously, like I said, they'll give you, you'll be giving information about you, right? So, you'll be told your employer. So, like the example we, we gave, you are Messi Williams, and you are working for Skyride and Code Chartered Accountant. So, if you are you'll give me you'll be told from the precinct, you already know who you are preparing the report for because you'll be given information like management account, you'll be given information like, oh, the history and all of that about the company you're preparing for. So if they're giving information about Skyride and Co, you obviously know you are preparing an internal reports, right? Because you are preparing the report for your employer. But if you are giving information about a third party, for instance, let's say you are giving information about XYZ hospitals, or uh, hospital, or let's just say XYZ Limited or XYZ PLC, you know that's the presence of a third party, right? So you know it's an external report you're going to be preparing. So information about the risk. So from the pristine, you already know if you're preparing an internal report or an external report, as the case may be answered. I said the information may include the industry, the history of the company, its business, operations, and shelter. So if you're giving a lot of information, You'll give information about oh the industry for instance like if it is pharmaceuticals that the company is going you'll be giving information about that if it is if it is probably yeah, manufacturing you'll be giving information about that and fashion industry whatever industry you'll be giving information about that the history of the company too you'll be giving information about the history of the company what the business or the the operations of the business and sometimes they'll give information about the shareholders they won't go as far as telling you the, the percentage of shares that they hold just just giving you an overview of the form of the company and sometimes all this information might not need everything so you have to be able to what the the assimilation skill your assimilation skill has to be top notch because the ability to assimilate information and use it because not all of this information may be needed when you're preparing the reports do you understand? Like now, for instance, telling me, oh, you have four shareholders, shareholder A has 20% for shareholder B has 30%. All of this information might not, all that information might not actually be necessary when, when I'm preparing my report, right? But then the ability to know what is necessary and what is not necessary is very, very important. So you also be giving financials, the financial statement of the company, be giving the financial statement of the company as well, the financial statement of the company. So, like the you know financial statement now, you have the statement of profit or loss, or other comprehensive income, statement of financial position, statement of cash flows, and the likes. So, be giving information about that. So, briefly, I also state the different team financial statements and management account. So, sometimes you be given financial statement, sometimes you give management account. The difference basically is just that the management account has not yet been audited. So you can use this as a professional skepticism. You can say, okay, one of the assumptions you make is you can make in this case is that the report has not been audited, so you cannot fully really rely on it. So the the authentic, or, or, how do you even say it now? How authentic or the reliance in that sense of the on the management account is not like top notch. That do you understand? Just coin something, you know, so I'll use English to wrap it up. So once you see management account, just know that that's the first professional skepticism you're supposed to talk about. Raise it that, okay, this management account has not been audited because you'll, be sc you'll score high points for professional skepticism, the ability to have a questioning mind. That is what, you're not, you're not here to lacram la plot, lacram la plot. In fact, moving from the preceding, we have information like taking information and just like, just extracting information and repeating information. You will not score points from, from that. You understand? So they expect you to show your professional skills. So the first thing is that if you are giving mandate accounts, don't forget to say that that account cannot be relied on because that's what be audited. Do you understand? So you begin management accounts, you begin financial statements. So you have to read through the unseen as well. So please, most times they don't usually change the information in the precinct, but then 
just to be on the safe side, it's better to read it. I would advise you to always read it again. And or maybe, maybe not read, maybe it might not be the right word. I would advise you to always scan through because two weeks, you have had two weeks to read this thing. So why are you wasting your time? They just can't receive or oh, everything is in order. If nothing was changed. And also look at the unseen. You know, one thing about accounting is that additional information can go a long way to like scatter everything right can go a long way to scatter everything so you have to actually read the unseen check if there's additional information and sometimes they'll give you an extra financial year so let's imagine that they, they gave you financial year from 2015 to 2018 in the on in the pre-scene now in the unseen they can add an extra 2019 so you understand so yeah you have to be doing a trend analysis now you cannot just be doing trend analysis for 2015 to 2018 you have to do trend analysis for 2015 to 2019 so you have to like compile everything together right so that's the financials we taught you they'll, they'll give information about the financials and then in some cases they'll give information about the contract or the project about the contract or the project now the contract of the project is the financial data analysis that's financial data analysis so most times detailed information about the financial data analysis will be given to you in the unseen but in some cases they will just mention something. Oh, probably just give a correspondence or probably just an additional exhibit and say, oh, the company is considering a project from federal government to accept the contract from federal government, to accept the contract from XYZ, something like that. You understand? So they will just give you an idea of the financial data, financial data analysis. Pardon me, sorry. Financial data analysis. But it's not always the case. It's not always the case. And if, it's, if they don't give any information, that's not the problem. I've given you, I've released a video on financial data analysis. So you can just look at it, look at how financial data analysis is done. You understand? Go through your study text, read it as well, and prepare yourself for financial data analysis. But sometimes they just give you a glimpse, you understand? They just open the curtain a bit <laughs> and show you a little of what they want, what, what they're going to ask you, but they'll not give you detailed information until you see the unseen. That's why you see detailed information right that's what you see so now the big question is how can i access the person this is not actually because now the person will be loaded on the icon website two weeks before the examination date so but then person is always flying around like you understand if you attend tutorial centers if you're on group pages for icon you definitely this is not hard to get but if you're someone that oh you are reading your own which is brilliant or you are not like in any on any group or anything that's not a problem just go to the icon website it will be released two weeks before the examination so you can start counting down two weeks before your case study examination you can just start checking through the release it then so you just download it and then you can have access to it for free please don't let anybody tell you pay money for pristine you're not paying you no know, it's free just download it have your data download it and then you have access to the pristine all right so on the next thing we're talking about now is the importance of the pristine the importance of the person so the first thing is preparation now the person is giving to you to prepare please the person is not giving to you for decoration it's giving to you to prepare to prepare you for the exam so you need to digest all the information like digest it and i always tell you the dullest pen is sharper than the sharpest brain so please have a piece of paper and write down write down i know you are you know i have i have friends like that that they are very intelligent they don't need to complex accounting complex mathematical problems they don't need to write down they can use their brain and they have gotten it down like i have a very good friend like that ask her anything she's like i call her calculator so if you're that kind of person that's not the problem but please don't do that for case study examination please get a paper and pen write down okay write down write down write down you understand so digest all information scatter is do from cover to cover right so yeah it's giving to you to prepare you for the examination so yeah you will not come confused and lost and blank to prepare you for the examination so that's the importance of the person and that thing again is to familiarize you with the industry to familiarize you with the industry right so now like i said earlier you'll be giving information about the recipient of the report so for instance probably you're giving probably the recipient of a report is in the fashion industry now so you'll be giving information about the fashion industry so you, you will know that i'm supposed to prepare for a fashion industry because from the information you say okay the history of the company you see or what the company's business operation is and all of that to get so you have to familiarize yourself with the industry go online research on it i said here gather information about their strengths their challenges their opportunities gather information about it okay what is the purpose of gathering information it's going to help you when you're preparing your reports because you're able to say okay oh, the reason why 
the financial statements, the, the company is financially weak is because of the current situation happening in the industry because people are no more buying clothes again maybe people are no more, people have refused that they've gone on strike they're not buying clothes again so people are like so the revenue is going to be the revenue in the fashion industry is below right so you how would how did you know that because you have done what you have gone to research on the strengths opportunities challenges of the industry in view so that's going to help you so you're supposed to familiarize yourself with the industry i said for instance if you discover that there's an increase in demand for locally produced goods rather than, than imported goods you can give that as a recommendation oh you can tell them that oh to increase the revenue the company should also to also engage in or start producing locally something like that to get so give it as a recommendation this, this will show that you actually did your homework you understand so the person is giving to you to familiarize yourself with the industry that you are considering another thing again is prepare the financial so prepare the financial analysis so like i said earlier in your precinct you'll be giving information your financial statements or your management account as the case may be so you'll be giving information about that so you are supposed to prepare your financial analysis before then like have a sketch and i used the word sketch and i highlighted the sketch i put it in caps because it is a sketch right because like i said there's sometimes that information may change and probably give you an additional information in the unseen that alters everything so have a sketch don't do like i'm oh i've done everything i've done liquidity all the liquidity ratios all the profitability ratios so just enter the exam hall and just do what you want no because sometimes they give specific what in my pre in our previous classes we spoke about it that sometimes we have specific and general requirements so if they're giving you, if you have done liquidity ratios, and you get to the exam hall, that they're not asking you liquidity ratios, and you're not doing liquidity ratios, that shows that you're not following instruction. And like I always say, instruction is part of your examination. Do you understand? So you have to what have a sketch. What you do might not be what you see. You understand? What you prepare might not be eventually what you will need, but at least have a sketch. So you are going there with confidence. You are going there with well prepared planned and everything you have a, you have a blueprint of what you want to do like i said in my previous video an architectural design eventually you might not follow everything like word for word in total verbatimly but at least you have an idea of what you want to do right so have a sketch of the financial analysis and like i also mentioned previously i also said that sometimes a glimpse of the financial data analysis will be given to you so you can go through previous i can questions look at it oh they have talked about a, a contract before in November 2019 or November 2020 or November 2014. Check it out. Do you understand? Look at the examination, uh, the examiner's comments. Look at the examiner's marking guide that was attached to the the past question. Read through. You understand? Who knows? They can actually ask you something very similar. Do you understand? So it's going to help you. So you prepare your financial data analysis with paper and by row. Please, oh, let me use paper and pen, right? Okay, so I use pen. Paper and pen, not in your head. Please, it's going to help you. And you start reading it as well. And another importance of the precinct, it helps you to manage time. Now, imagine that you're entering the examination hall. You don't even know what to expect. You don't know whether they're going to ask you whether to do for hospital, whether to do for... You don't even know anything. You're just entering, you're just confused. You don't even have a direction. In fact, for the first 30 minutes, you are just trying to find yourself that, oh my God, fashion industry. What do I know about the fashion industry? Oh my God, pharmaceuticals. What do I know? You understand? You start racking your head. You start going. You'll be confused. But then if you, know, if you are going with like a, some level of preparation, do you understand? So you are going, you're not lost. You're not confused. So it helps you to prepare ahead of time. It helps you prepare ahead of the time. You're not entering the hall confused and totally blank. So you're not wasting Fine, yes, you still need to read. Fine, yes, time may still not be sufficient, but at least it is still better than going confused. So it's going to help you to manage time. And like I said, when you have a sketch already, you are going there with a plan. You are going there with a blueprint. You are going there prepared. So you have like a leverage. Do you understand? It's giving you leverage. That's it. And that's in you. And that important is... It's going to help you research. It's going to help you research. So, like I said earlier, that sometimes that will give you a glimpse, a snapshot of what they're going to ask you in your financial data analysis, and also give you the financial statements. So you have to check through previous I can uh, I can case study examination for any related previous case studies. So it might not be exactly the same, but at least you can still find something similar. So you already know what the examiners complained about in that year. 
you will not make that mistake again, right? You already know what the examiners wanted, the marking guide, what they wanted to see, what are the things that they, that they actually marked and all of that. So it's going to help you a lot. You have to, you can do a research. It's going to help you in research. Finally, an importance of, another importance of the precinct is going to help for, it's going to encourage collaborative learning. Collaborative learning. Do you understand? Please, malpractice is not advice. Please, Ensure you prepare for your exam and then don't go there and start stretching your neck or relying on anybody. No, but at least if you have a session of the examination question you are giving before your examination, so you can talk to your friends. Oh, what do you think about this section? Oh, I read this, I don't understand. What do you understand by this? Oh, have you researched about the industry? Can I see your, your jotter? Can I see what you have jotted down? It's going to help you. Oh, this is what I've learned. Tell me what you learned. Collaborative learning. Not that you'll be a leech anyway. That, oh, just collect, collect, collect. Obviously, collaboration, right? You help people as well. So it's going to give you ample time to seek the opinions of people. Get corrected when you have silly mistakes. Like now, I remember when I wrote my case study examination and a lot of people were saying, oh, this is an internal report. Oh, this is an external report. Oh, no. You don't want, you are blessed because you don't need to have that confusion. You already just watch my internal and external reports video. It's going to help you a lot. So you don't even need to be in that category at all. But then, there was nothing like this channel, right? So, a lot of confusion. But then, as we began to engage in collaborative learning, began to oh, listen to other people's advice and all of that, so oh, we, we came to a conclusion, right? And we got the right answer. So, collaborative learning helps us to have collaborative learning. So, and silly mistakes that you could have made if you were alone. Like, oh, my God, I didn't know I was supposed to add this. Oh, my God, I didn't know I was not supposed to do this. All of that is like eliminated to the barest minimum if you have the pristine so that's just benefit of the pristine the importance of the pristine so what are the steps you should take when you get your your pristine so the first thing you should do is that you should check for information about you who are you like i said any name you are bearing that your father and mother gave you <laughs> as i think there's a hole just drop it at the door when you finish you pick it up because they're going to give you a totally different personality and portfolio right so information about you who are you who are you who are you working for your employer, right? And that will help you to also determine whether you're writing an internal or external report. Because when you know who you are, when you know your employer, and you are seeing a third party, then you know it's an external report. An external report. But when you know who you are, you know your employer, and you're seeing information about your employer, you definitely know it's an internal report. So determine if you're writing an internal or external report. And you know in external reports, you have to have include a disclaimer but in your internal report, you do not need a disclaimer. So check the recipient of your report. So why, who are you preparing the report for? Then check through the information about the recipient of your report. Okay, what, what are the information? What, what did they tell you? Okay, did they give you the history? Or did they give you the business operations? It's going to help you a lot because this is where you won't discover the industry. This is where you discover the challenges of the company. This is where you discover the strengths of the company. And you can use it when you're preparing your reports. So, and another thing you should do again is to assess the financial statement and have a sketch, sketch of your financial statement. I'm, and I'm emphasizing that sketch. Please don't go and do la pole. La crème, la pole. So have a sketch of your financial statement analysis and possibly your financial data analysis if they give you a glimpse of it. But if they don't give it, that's not a problem. Just watch my video on financial data analysis. You are good to go. And you can also check the complete report I prepared for November 2019 as well. So have a sketch of your financial analysis. And check if information was, if any information was stated about any contracts, right? Any information, that's like financial data analysis. Do you have any information about any contracts? And like I said, if you don't have anything, don't worry. Just check my videos. It's going to help you a lot. So just have information about, check if you have any information about it. Then finally, have a sketch of your reports. Have a sketch from the beginning to the end, not just the ratio so from the beginning to the end. And like I said, please write it down on a piece of paper and study it very well. Read it. Yes, you are reading for case study. Read it like, well, maybe this might not be the right word. Maybe I should not go say it. I don't want you to cram. Understand it, but read it like I read it for exam. Have it on a piece of paper. Keep reading it. Keep reading it. Keep reading it. Keep reading it. Read it over and over again. And have an understanding of the report yourself because you will hear a lot of things, a lot of views, a lot of opinions. People will come here and then, oh, this is internal. I'm telling you, a lot of confusion. But at least when you have your own, you can read it over and over again and have an understanding for you consult others. So basically, that's just basically what I have to say about the pristine. 
if you have any question let me know in the comment section thank you so much i hope you learned a lot today did you learn a lot let me know okay thank you so much for the reviews thank you so much please don't forget to subscribe please do not forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Thank you so much for stopping by. And I'll see you in my next class. Please don't forget to like my video. Don't forget to share. And don't forget to comment, right? And let me know videos that you like me to create. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to let me know in the comment section. So, till I see you in my next video, have a lovely day. Bye.